Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about RTE phase. The RTE generation process consists of two phases. One is RTE contract phase, another one is RTE generation phase. In this video, we are going to deeply discuss about when we need a RTE contract phase and when we need a RTE generation phase. First, we can start to discuss about AutoSAR layer. AutoSAR is a layered architecture. It has three layers. One is application layer, another one is RTE, another one is base software layer. Inside the base software, we have a three more layers. One is service layer, EC abstraction layer and MCAL, microcontroller abstraction layer. This is a software architecture of AutoSAR. If you see the application layer, it has software components and RTE and this one is a base software. In base software service layer, here we mentioned about the services. And in abstraction layer, we will have all the abstraction which is related to the services. And this is a MCAL drivers, MCAL layer, it contains about all the equivalent drivers. In the software component development, we can consider two phases. One is software component development, another one is software component deployment. In the software component development, we will talk about the specification, design and implementation of software components. So whenever you are getting a requirement, so when you are developing a software components in application layer, those all are will be considered as a software component development. For an example, when you are creating a ports, internal behavior, events, runnable entity, these all are which is related to the particular software component development. Another one is software component deployment. So here we are talking about integration of your application to base software and the finally the allocation of components to ECU. All these things will be discussed under software component deployment. Then now we have to understand about what is RTE. RTE is nothing about it's a runtime environment. Then what is the roles and responsibility of RTE? Uh, the roles and responsibility of RTE is to make a communication between one software component to another software component in application layer. An application layer want to communicate to base software. Again, they have to communicate via RTE. So the major important thing of RTE is communication between software component and the scheduling of the software components also. So now we can discuss about what is RTE generation phase. Then basically the RTE generator can run in two phases. One is contract phase, another one is generation phase. In contract phase, only we will consider your software component description file as an input. It will read the software component description file and it will generate the component APIs. So in the contract phase, the output is only the header file of the particular software component. In the generation phases, we will read all the ECU extract and um, system descriptor file. By using all those files, we will generate the RTE code for a single ECU. So in the generation phase, we will consider all the ECU extract, system extract, flat view, all those files and we will generate the equivalent header, source and related IRXML file too. Now we will deeply see about how the contract phase and generation phase will work. If you see the AutoSAR design flow, the software component description, it's about the individual software component, the ARXML, SWCD ARXML file that will consider in the contract phase. And as I mentioned, during the contract phase, for your ARXML file, the application header files will be generated. For an example, if you have a software component A, then during contract phase, RT underscore software component A dot H file will get generated. And equivalent to the type and all the files will get generated. And also in the contract phase, if somebody third party or somebody is delivering the software component as object code, that is also will be considered during contract phase. In the generation phase, we will get an input from ECU extracted file. From there, we are generating a RTE code. You can consider RT.C and also a related OS config file and application header file for your particular software component and related to all the ECU extract files. All those will be considered as an input in the RTE generation phase. Finally, your RTE contract phase files and generation phase files will be combined. It will go the input to the build build in the sense you can consider as a compilation steps. Now, what is contract phase and what is the input for the contract phase? What is the output for the contract phase? As we discussed now, 
the input is interface definition and your software component definition so consider your arxml file the output is equivalent application header file for also the type definition for the particular software component will be the output of contract phase that's what i have mentioned in this picture if you see software component description dot arxml file maybe you can consider your software component file which you created in the application layer so that will go to the rte contract phase during the time equivalent header files will be generated that is rte contract phase what is the use case of rte contract phase because here we are considering only a arxml file the particular software component description file then in the case then what is the use case of contract phase so here we can use software sharing with object libraries for an example if third party is delivering a software component as object then those will be used in the rte contract phase now then what all are the problems we have in basically when we are doing rt generation for an example during rt generation rt buffer access is granted by default for an example whenever we are creating a variable so rt buffer will create with some numbers it depends on your rt and your rt generation mechanism so i am taking some input from isolar related so here if you see it generated with some random numbers so if somebody want to access or somebody they are trying to access the particular variable from their software code then what will happen is whenever the autosar interface is getting changed or whenever some configuration addition changes is happening in the arxml file rte will change this buffer number so if somebody trying to access this variable but as of now rte is changed this number to another number then in the case we will end up with a linker error so how we will get a solution from rt contract phase for this problem so what rt contract phase is doing is instead of directly buffer access it is replaced with the function calls if you see as application developer in your source code you no need to access this variable directly instead of that we will call the function which was generated by rte so when we are calling this function the equivalent software component function will get called by rte and also in rt.c instead of accessing for an example we are not going to access this buffer directly so we will only call this function internally all the steps will be taken care by rte so now we will call a, that means application developer will call a function only from there we will get a proper data so i took from example from my side of only rt write if somebody is going to call rt read they will read this buffer properly so this will be ensured by rte during rte contract phase now we'll go to the rte generation phase as we discussed in rte generation phase it's almost be going to the deployment kind of cases for an example we will get the ecu extractor output the system related outputs that means arxml file all those will be considered input to the rte generation phase so the use case of rte generation phase is when we are going to integrate your asw to bsw and when you have a software sharing file from oem or third party in this all the things will be processed in the generation phase so if you see this picture if you see ecu extracted system extracted your flat view flat map all those files will be input during rt generation phase and also if you have your ecc values and swcd file and bswmd file all those will be input to the rt generation phase so output of this file is equivalent header file c file and if any specific rt bswmd file anything is required that will be uh, processed during rt generation phase now this is another topic is software complement software component implementation category so how the software component implementation category is playing a major role during rt generation process for an example here whenever your software component is created we have to note it in a way how we are going to deliver the particular software component whether it is a swsrc meaning source file or object file or header file for an example when we are delivering or mentioning a category as swsrc then rt generation process during time when we are mentioning swsrc then in the case of generation phase is will get triggered but when we are mentioning as a object file then it will lead to the contract phase is triggered as we discussed now so this is also important parameter for rt generation process so in the software component implementation mapping again we have to mention the internal behavior of your particular software component so this is also very important 
I hope you have a clear idea about what is RT generation phase and RT, what is RT contract phase. So in the contract phase, the input is your software component description file. Output is equivalent header files. But generation phases, we will get a more SWCD, RXML file, ECU extraction, system extraction, BSWMD, all those files will be considered as an input and the output is equivalent.h.c and if it is required, RXML file too. Thanks for your time to watch this video. If you like it, please share it with your friends. You can subscribe our YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.